Good afternoon. Um, so first I'd like to start by getting a show of hands. So who here uses Bluetooth headphones to make a call? Okay, pretty much everyone. Who here notices that when you're listening to music or basically watching your favorite movies and then you accept a call or you join a conference call and your audio quality kind of drops and there's a big difference? Good, okay, we do see some people here. So today we're gonna to talk about how we can use low energy audio and how this can improve the quality of your calling applications. So my name is Luke, I'm a developer relations engineer here at Google. So in Android 13 comes support for Bluetooth for low energy audio hearable devices. This means a lot of the APIs we're looking at today are available for you to start using from today. LE Audio brings huge advancements to Bluetooth, providing users with great battery performance and high quality streaming. Uh, I think as an engineering team here, we know you don't normally get both of those things um, together. So you don't normally get battery life and performance. So what we're finding is that you can stream up to 32 kilohertz for media and phone calls, both for input and output. So no longer will the quality of your calls drop when you're using BLE Audio headphones. LE Audio does support multi-stream audio. This means it's capable of streaming multiple, independent, and synchronized audio streams. So a quick scenario I want us all to picture here is there's nothing here that's actually going on in real. But what really what I want to do is demonstrate some of the possibilities that we could have with this technology. So all of us here, I want us to imagine we're at an airport right now and we're sitting down, we're in a nice little bubble, we're listening to our music, we're watching our favorite movies, we're at the gate and we're generally waiting to um, board. What we could do is we could connect to a broadcast at your gate and you could continually listen to your music and then from there you could have the audio broadcasted to your hearable device. This kind of means you don't have to take your headphones off, kind of listen for your gate number to be called, whether you're being called. Um, so there's some really unique and interesting use cases that could come from this technology. Um, so we're really looking forward to talking about this a lot more in the future. So the LE Audio stack is in Android 13 and it officially supports the Bluetooth 5.3 and it comes with the default LC3 audio codec. This essentially means that the LC3 audio codec replaces media and the codecs for hands-free profile calls. Um, so this codec's much more efficient, it's reconfigurable, and it produces a higher quality of audio for your applications. Um, for a lot of you that don't want to kind of look at codecs and get involved with that, know that this stuff's kind of all done for you under the hood. It's on by default, so you don't have to worry about a lot of these um, codec requirements as it's on, for, it's on by default for media and calls. So LE Audio also does come with huge improvements and new standards for hearing aids too. So it offers better experiences for users with hearing impairments. And as someone that's hard of hearing myself and has to wear hearing aids on a day-to-day -day basis, it's really good to see kind of these new accessibility needs coming with this technology. So the hearing aid profile offers support for microphone during calls, and it does have separate and le separate channels for left and right audio. Um, so this hands-free profile is kind of the new standard, which really aims to improve the quality and the feature set for hearing aid devices. Um, I know for people that normally have accessibility uh, issues and kind of need new technology, it's really good to see kind of these consumer level features coming to people with accessibility needs. So it's really good to see how this is going to drive forward uh, going forward in the future. LE Audio does come with two paths to, to consider when using microphones. So one being recording mode and the second being communication mode. So recording mode offers high quality, large audio buffers and multi-channel support for left and right microphones. Whilst communication mode offers low latency and is the best experience you really want for your dialer or your VoIP calling applications. So now you'll know a lot more about LE Audio. I'm sure you wanna know how, about, uh, how to implement it in your applications. So there's essentially two ways you can implement it into your calling applications today and that's the audio manager and the telecom API. So the audio manager offers a way for you to choose which, what you wanna to stream to. However, it does come with a lot of overheads as you have to deal with Bluetooth timeouts, state management, disconnection and connection events. So there's a lot of state management you need to do in your applications when looking at the audio manager. 
Uh, the telecom manager, on the other hand, does offer you a much more complete API for your VoIP application needs. It's an easy to use API, which allows you to switch the audio routing for hearables. And it does come with a more complete feature set for VoIP applications, such as being able to hold the current call, or it does inform the platform that there's currently an active going call. So let's say you're in a conference call right now, and then you get an incoming call in your dialer application. By using this API, you're informing the platform that you're currently in a conference call with your um, VoIP application. So today we're going to look at the Telecom API just due to its rich feature set and um, kind of the needs it has there for LE Audio. So when writing a VoIP application or a dialer um, application, we always have this notion of you're joining a call, you're accepting a call, maybe you're joining a conference call, and you always have this notion that there's something happening in the background. So you want a foreground or a background service to deal with the connection of the call just in case someone needs to be browsing on their, um, on their browser and they need to open up a different application whilst you're on a call, you always want this notion of having a foreground or background service when you're writing these applications. The telecom manager here does come with us where it's a foreground service and it will have methods for incoming and outgoing calls. So the telecom service is a foreground service which is bound to your connection service and has methods for these incoming and outgoing calls. And once it's activated, so once it's instantiated, um, inside here you'll have audio related methods. So this one we can see here is you can get a list of all the Bluetooth devices. And from here you can choose which Bluetooth device you wish to um, connect to. Next we have a method where you might have certain scenarios where you might lose connection, the user might unplug their headset, um, they might use Bluetooth connection to their hearable devices. So we have this on state changed here, which basically inform you of whenever the audio device is changed and really informs you of what the current audio device is that's being used by the platform. Next, users may wish to change between Bluetooth devices, wired headphones, or the speaker. Um, so we have a simple method called set audio route in the connection class, and this will correctly set up the device's routing state if you wish to change between speaker, headsets, or Bluetooth. So this, uh, this is the method you really want to be using for setting between different devices. And next, we have another simple method here, which is called request, request Bluetooth audio. So if you're using API 28 or higher, when you request for Bluetooth audio to a specific device, you won't have to set the audio routing paths either, as this is kind of done for you under the hood. So with these few lines of code, you can quickly change between Bluetooth devices and audio states using the Telecom API, which means that you can focus more on your application rather than dealing with audio states, connected devices, timeout, and all these events we were talking about earlier. LE Audio does have the requirement for both the Surface and the hearable device to both support LE Audio. So another benefit for the Telecom API is you don't have to worry about this as it's kind of dealt for you all under the hood. But if you do need to check if the hardware supports LE Audio, you can use the API, is LE Audio supported, in the Bluetooth adapter. For a more detailed guide on how to implement the Telecom API, do audio recording or general information on, the, uh, on LE Audio, you can find more information on our developer website. We expect to see a lot more LE Audio devices on the market next year, and we look forward to your applications supporting these new hearables. I'd like to thank everyone for your time today, and thank you.